One of the coolest features I like to demonstrate is the scrambler feature. And what that is, it's a form of uh, voice security. Uh, let's say you have two radios that have the scrambler on and uh, one could transmit to the other, it'll sound fine. But anybody else listening or eavesdropping, uh, they're going to hear mumbled, uh, sort of like Daffy Duck sort of uh, talking, really distorted. You won't be able to decipher what they're saying. Maybe if you listen close enough, you will. But uh, this particular type of uh, scrambling is the lowest level uh, available. There are more advanced scrambling methods, but uh, I'm sure it's, it's a pretty penny as well. But uh, f standard, this thing comes with, with uh, eight groups of scrambling uh, schemes that you can use, meaning each one of those groups, which this has eight of them, is going to scramble your voice eight different ways. It just takes the reference of the frequency of your voice and kind of shifts it another uh, degree or two to the left or right or whatever. And I'll demonstrate that. Uh, let me warn you that scrambling in part 90, no not part 90, but part 95, uh, the personal radio services and amateur part 97, it's illegal to scramble your voice or use encryption uh, when you transmit over the air. It's a gray area for, for some for the FRS frequencies and GMRS. Midland just got slammed with a fine by the FCC, uh, but to play it safe, it's not allowed. Uh, the only people that are allowed to have some sort of a scrambling are, are the Part 90 radio people, the uh, law enforcement basically, and um, their licenses. If they they have to uh, apply for a license. It, they have to stipulate that they want that in the license as well that so they can have permission to go ahead and transmit in that mode but these radios right out of the box they're capable of doing that so I'm going to demonstrate it stand by for the scrambler test I'm going to go the opposite way so my voice won't interfere by being in the room Now I'm going to demonstrate this guy talking in scrambler group number two and this guy is going to talk scrambler two, group number eight and see how they interact with each other. So if you noticed, when they talked in different groups, you could somewhat still make out what they're saying, but you could hear that, that the reference of your voice was changed a little bit uh, up and down in, in, in hertz or whatever they use as a reference. 
I think that's the coolest feature that these little radios could do out of all the features that it already has to begin with and like I said it's illegal unless you're a public safety agency in the law enforcement side I believe uh, the FCC rules is like the tax code uh, it's kinda hard to decipher sometimes but you better play on the side of caution but the ability is there and the uh, capabilities are already built into this real cool so I'm kinda curious I wanna see in the scrambling mode if this thing still transmit the private line code the CTCSS code uh, intact so that sine wave there is my private line code being transmitted on this frequency with no scrambling so that represents 146.2 Hertz so I'm going to transmit with the same PL private line CTCSS in the scrambling mode and see if this thing will uh, uh, be the same okay here's the comparison they transmit the same PL five four three two one and it's scrambling so it doesn't distort your private PL now let's see let's see if it'll decode your DTMF code in the scrambling mode Five five eight four five five eight nine rather five four three two one and it's still scrambling pretty good they didn't overlook that so it does not uh, uh, distort your PL or your DTMF so theoretically you could go through a repeater with this I tried it and it doesn't work very well uh, it works better when you go uh, radio to radio but now here's uh, how I'm running this this is uh, towards firefighters first of all this one's running off the lithium ion battery this one here it's got the battery illuminator so it's a car charger hooked up to my uh, 12 volt battery here just to show both types of uh, powering this thing up anyway you firefighters, uh, some of you have uh, paging done, so uh, if, if you recognize this sound, that's a paging uh, tone set to uh, a company or uh, volunteers or whatever to let them know that hey you're being paged listen up there's a call being conducted here or whatever uh, this is able to do uh, they call it two-tone but here in the states it's referred to as one plus one for you know Motorola paging or whatever and it's customizable you could put whatever tones in there to decode and encode so for instance this one is set up to receive a two-tone or one plus one paging sequence and when it's in this mode it's it's muted it'll receive like right now it's receiving but you don't hear anything on the speaker so I'm gonna go ahead and transmit my tone so this one is encoding the code to turn this on so I go uh, the orange call button on the side call I got 10 memory spaces to that are pre-programmed and sending it. That little tone notified you that you got a page and it opens up the uh, audio. Call four three two one. You have a call. And you can have this to be unmuted for from five seconds to fifteen seconds I got fifteen seconds on this but if they keep on talking and talking and talking it will stay open in uh, for a longer time but as soon as it sees fifteen seconds of silence it will go back to the muted state so hopefully maybe when I get done talking here it'll go back down to the muted state let's see nope not yet but believe me it will now there's another method called uh, five-tone paging. I personally never seen this uh, the scheme worked out in the field. I think it's more European maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, 
what it is is it sends out a sequence of five tones and that's what sets the pager off on, on these radios here so uh, what it sounds like is uh, like this that's what it sounds like and if you have a radio that that receives that signal and is programmed for that it would uh, open up what's cool about this feature in this particular radio is if this radio is calling this radio he, w he would wake up the audio will open up and after he does that it's going to transmit back to this guy here saying hey I hear you what do you want to talk about then both these radios are set for five tone paging so they're both muted until they hear their particular code this is code number 00001 and this one is radio number two so I'm gonna go through the sequence five tone hit the call button on the side it's saying call and then you put in the code of the radio that you want to call zero 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 two push to talk once and it's transmitting he woke up he's transmitting back, back to him and this guy woke up five four five four three two one so they're both communicating with each other the uh, receive is opened up and they can have their conversation and it will remain open until uh, 15 seconds of silence and that's programmable it could be as low as five seconds but I maxed it out at 15 and pretty soon these will go back to sleep again or muted to receive another message and uh, we'll just let it go for a little bit see did you hear that they both went back to sleep so if I transmit back and forth he's muted and if you see this guy here he's receiving something but the audio is muted so they're both back into paging mode or asleep again so now this guy called this guy now I'm gonna have this guy call this guy call he is code number one push to talk he woke up he's calling this guy back he woke up five four three two one five four three two one so that's pretty cool what uh, application that you could do is if you're out in the field doing something uh, if you want to know if your buddy is in range you could just call this guy and if he responds you know he's in range and of course he'll know that you're calling up oh, it went to sleep and uh, and that, that, I think that's a pretty cool feature technically I think that's called a uh, transponder answer back Motorola has that feature for their MDC if you're familiar with that so let's do that again code number two transmit he's transmitting the other guy's receiving he receives it he's answering back good to go pretty cool if you're out of range and you do that the uh, radio that you're calling will never respond because he never got your code so you know he's either out of range or you know something's going on so in summary the TYT TH UV F1 dual band transceiver is an extreme value radio uh, excellent qualities and, and features for a hundred bucks you cannot beat that anywhere among other Chinese made radios I think this one here takes the cake uh, right out of the box it has more features than the other makers that I've that I know of and I did my research with them and and I'm more impressed with this one here uh, I get asked many times uh, what's a cheap alternative radio that people can use in, in public safety or hams or or preppers or survivalist 
any, any one of those uh, scenarios or disciplines, even soccer moms. And it's kind of hard to answer that question because com gear is not cheap. I mean, even the bubble pack FRS radios for a pair is is uh, forty dollars for uh, for a halfway decent, you know, radio. This one here for an extra sixty bucks, you got some power right in your fingertips. And uh, this 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 video series was pretty long, and it should be because all the features that this thing showed, and and hopefully I I covered most of the of, of the features that this thing will give. There's a lot more, and it's more of operational use and stuff like that. And it's a pain in the ass to go through that whole thing. So <clears throat> here's there's my review.